One second, guys. I'm trying to record this, but I'm getting an error. Hold up. All right. Well, welcome to this installment of our Lunch and Learn sessions. Everything looks good on my end. And today's topic is going to be document generation. And if you've uh, attended these thus far, you know what the drill is. But just in case we have a newbie in here, what we're doing is um, holding off on questions uh, until the first uh, part of the presentation is over. Um, this will probably run, I don't know, about 20 minutes or so. Uh, so if you have a question, just please jot it down. And then we'll open it up to the group and um, address anything that I might have missed. And if you'd be so kind, right now everything sounds great on my end, but if you have a speaker phone, cell phone, if you put it on mute, that will be greatly appreciated. And then just unmute it, unmute it uh, prior to your uh, question. I've got Project Pack up. And as we're going to see, document generation really hasn't changed that much. There's been a recurring theme, though, uh, because of the tree. Um, if, if we're talking about conversion or hold it, I'm Nancy, can you still hear me? Yes, I sure can. Okay, things really got quiet. I'm a little paranoid with this apparatus that I have strapped to my head. Um, but yeah, there's been about seven zero. The real changes are emanating off of this tree and document generation is no different. Let's, um, and I've got this, let me, I've just got everything open here. Let me kind of get a handle on this tree here. OK. So let's go up to Options, Document. And as you'll see, this thing doesn't look all that different. There's, there's a couple things we've changed. And that's really my focus today is, is to um, help you see where the differences lie. So we've got um, all of the document types that we did before. There's 20 of them. All of this is the same. We've got something different down here. And I'll show you this when we get into the actual generation of documents. We've added this in 7.0 uh, as a mechanism. If, if you're using job specs in concert with your estimate, if you want to, you can print those now automatically. In the past, what customers would have to do is if they were using job spec, they would um, key those in with row notes section or something like that, maybe a bunch of comments. So we're going to generate these automatically now. We might uh, generate just the uh, category level, or we might generate the subcat level. And I'll show you an example of that. You know, whether this is going to be uh, suitable for your customers, that remains to be seen. Because it's, it's quite possible you'd have 20 or 30 specs. Maybe you don't want to print all that detail. Maybe you still are going to have to roll it up. Uh, you'll just have to experiment. But uh, this was something that was on our list of to-dos. So we got her in there in 7.0. Um, let's Let's take a look here at line types. You know, a big change between 6.0 and 7.0 was we, uh, we removed some of the rows. And, and I'm sure you all remember, for summary purposes, we had subtype or sub, subtote or subtotal. And we had uh, total. We had grand total. Well, those rows are no longer here. And they have been replaced with the tree, and in, in particular, with the summary notes. So those are gone from our list of rows to print. And that, that's probably going to be the biggest change, because I'm sure all of you have used uh, the subtotal and the total to organize your, your estimates. And, and in the case of, of some humongous estimates, um, remember, those rows were collapsible. And, and really, that was the only way to, 
to keep track of it. Well, all that's been replaced with this hierarchical tree. This is this is much more intuitive, easier to work with, and um, so that's that's something we need to talk about here in a moment about how we decide which of these summary nodes gets printed. Um, product has replaced in group. Subassembly has replaced in subgroup. And the rest looks pretty much the way it used to. It's all okay out of there. Um, printing columns, yeah, there's there's a couple extra columns now that we've added um, that you might want to utilize. Uh, if I go down to the bottom, I see um, cost type, weight, cubic space, drawing reference, and location. So these these are new. Uh, columns in our estimate, there's cost type, and uh, we made them printable. Um, whether or not you're going to use those, again, that, that's going to be your call, maybe internally, uh, location, drawing reference, that might be handy on a quotation as well as, as you uh, attribute um, different parts of the quote to different drawings. This thing behaves just the way it always did, no changes there. Okay, um, hide product prices, that used to say hide in-group prices. A product is essentially, uh, has replaced an in-group, behaves the same way. Um, what else do we got here? This is a big one. In um, 7.0, we now have a mechanism to identify the rows that are associated with install indoor delivery. And um, let's say in your world, you're actually putting install and delivery line items within, a, within the context of a product. So by simply, if, if you want Project Pack to get to exclude really all of those um, costs from from the part of the bid, you know where where these products might be located, we can automatically break them out, gather them up, aggregate them up, and print them at the bottom. So uh, I think that'll be very handy for for the folks that are embedding install and delivery within their products. Now, if you don't do that, and you your uh, mo is to just uh, make an estimate of these items at the end end of your bid, then you'll continue to do so. Okay, that that hasn't changed. This would really only be applicable for the people that are embedding install and delivery within products. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, I got a little bit of a bug here. This is going to be fixed in our next update. Obviously, uh, <laughs> well, not obviously, but when when we turn that on, that is supposed to light up. And all it's saying is, do you want to print two lines, or do you want to print one line where we aggregate install and delivery together? That will be fixed in our next update. That is going to be patch number 7.0.2. I suspect it's going to go out um, Wednesday, possibly Thursday. Got a couple uh, issues that, that we've encountered. We want to get those fixed. We're trying to turn these things around as quick as we can. Actually, there's, there's three or four printing issues that uh, will be a part of that uh, update this being let's keep going um, printing set, uh, settings column and line type we've been there not a lot of changes but here's here's a big one and this is really speaking to this issue of what do I print from the tree and um, if I um, if I if I look at this guys um, you know here's your root top level, and then the very first indentation, the very first level, if you will, is the base bid and one or more change orders, or I should say zero. There, there might not be any change orders. I happen to have one here, so I could show you how that's going to print. And uh, when you start a new estimate, you're always going to have a root. You're always going to have your base bid. Can't get rid of it. Don't want to get rid of it. And you'll just be dragging and dropping um, new items onto your grid here, inserting them just pretty much building up these estimates like you used to. And um, when it comes to printing, I suspect you're going to have one or more levels of these summary notes. Now, we take a look at my example here. Very simple. I've organized my base bid by floors, 
So I got floor A and I got floor B. And within each floor, I've got um, some number of uh, rooms. And I, I don't have this open. I can't open it right now because I'm dealing with this. But, but um, you'll see this in a moment. I've got some rooms under floor B as well. So as far as this dialog box is concerned, base estimate is telling us how you want to print this node. Change order, how do I want to print one or more change orders? And then first summary level, this maps to the very first level under the base bid or under change order. And you know what I'm going to do, guys? This is not real handy. Let me, let me open this up. You can see what I'm talking about. Makes a little more sense. And of course, under each one of these, I just have products. Okay. So I think that... That looks pretty good. Let's go back up to the top. And over to notes. So here we go. Change order. First summary level. This is going to be the very first level of summary node that I have under base bid or perhaps under change order. Okay? And it just, you've seen these before, they just, they indent. And that's how we are going to refer to them in these print directive dialog boxes. So first summary level, I'm talking about floors. Second summary level, I'm talking about, um, in my example, the rooms within a floor. And you can see it could keep going down deeper and deeper and deeper. We have no limitations here. You could, if you want to go down 20 levels deep, you got a humongous estimate and you're busting it up, that's your prerogative. As far as print directives, however, we're only going to take it to the seventh level and higher. And whatever you tell us to do here will be used on 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay? I suspect most people aren't going to go much deeper than this. But, uh, of course, you know, people have done a lot of things in Project Pack that I didn't expect, so who knows? So anyway, um, the idea being you will come here and you will set up how you want this thing to print. So for example, let's say I don't, I don't want anything to print for my base estimate node, my change order, but when I have an estimate and I'm at my global level now, in general when I'm setting up my print directives, if I'm on my first summary level, I want to print a header. Okay, what does that mean? Well, kind of think back to the old days. You remember how you might, maybe your estimate had um, subtotals in it, and maybe subtotals in your world were rooms. A lot of our customers would print or would put a section row, which would print bold and, um, you know, to kind of um, offset each, each of these subtotals. So maybe there is a, a section that prints bold called room 107, and perhaps you're printing some products that you've estimated within this room and then you would lay in a subtotal row and you would be printing your subtotals. Well, with, with summary nodes here, um, now if you want, I, I can show you how to do this, you certainly could um, explicitly put in a summary row over here on the grid and, and we could print it, but you don't really need to do that anymore. So if, if you kind of like row and then maybe some subtotals. All you'll have to do is print, uh, turn print header on. That will generate essentially a section row automatically. Okay. Now, if you uh, turn on this, notice that's grayed out right now. If you turn that on, now I could print notes. So perhaps I have put notes in here for floor A. Maybe in your world you describe the basic um, materials. And, and what you're going to do and what you're not going to do on that room. And maybe you hide all of this other stuff and that's all you print. Well, uh, the way this is working right now is you would go ahead and say, yeah, I'm going to print a header and I'm going to print notes. Okay, now this is changing a little bit based on some feedback we got. I'm going to lay it out how it works today and then I'll, I'll go back and tell you the way it's, or uh, the changes we plan on making. So that kind of takes care of the header part. Now let's say I also want to print subtotals. We will generate a subtotal and it'll print just like the old days at the bottom 
of whatever um, grouping we have here. So we really have the, it's exactly opposite of the way the tree is organized, but we've we've kept the grid, we've kept the um, the printing uh, the print documents the same as we used to. So I can print a header, I could print all the good stuff, and then when it comes time to print a subtotal, if that's what I wish to do, that's what you're going to mark, print subtotal. And then you have a couple choices here. Again, these gray out, I want a subtotal, then you could say hide sell price. So this would be a lot like, um, think back to 6.0, you're printing those subtotals. A lot of our customers uh, via these options right here would say um, hide sell price. Okay, uh, They want to show their customer that we've taken care of this room and maybe they've listed out the products, but they don't want to divulge particular price is. They want to avoid that conversation and so they hide the sell price. So we, we do the same thing here. Hide quantity. Um, just like the old days, you could put a quantity on a subtotal, which is real cool, right? You, you have a room and, it, and it's essentially the same as, as four other rooms. Well, you could do the takeoff once and then you could put a quantity in on that summary row, just like before. And if you wanted to, you could, you could print it or you could hide it. If you're using um, summary rows and, and they happen to be just one, one uh, quantity of one, then it's, it's a little um, redundant to print the quantity of one. So in that case, you might decide to hide it. Okay? Now, if you have some that are one and some that are five, well, we're, we're going to have to print it. Okay? So there's, there's no confusion. And that, my friends, is as simple as it is. You just you will set up these directives, and this is generic. We you know we we don't know what you're going to call the the first summary level and what you're going to call the second, so we we just simply refer to them in this manner. Okay. Now, real quick, how is this changing? We've uh, had a customer of ours point out um, some problems with with printing. Um, in 7.0 versus um, 6.0, and the problem is is that really what they would like to see is they if there's notes involved with a uh, a summary node, they would really like it printed in concert with the subtotal. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to make this optional. Do you want to print your notes with underneath the header that that generated section, or do you want to print it under the subtotal? So we'll make that small little change. And uh, that'll be coming shortly in the next couple of days. Okay. Uh, special print directives, alternates. Okay, so um, if you were in other sessions, you know that you can have alternates. This summary node is an alternate. I can tell that because I got a little blue circle here. And when you have alternates in your estimate, if it is uh, approved, if the status is approved, there's three different statuses, if it's approved, we are always going to print it. I, uh, I, I put it in here, but it, it's grayed out, there's a check in it. If it's approved, we're printing it. And the reason for that is because of the way Project Pack works. If you have um, an alternate now, like room A34, it's in pending status, it is not being calculated. It's almost like it's ignored. Well, it's exactly like it's, it's, it's ignored, okay? As far as the estimate's concerned, if it isn't approved, it's not part of this estimate. Well, that's not the case for a document. Obviously, um, it's up to you to tell us what you want to show on that document. So in this case, if, if I have pending alternates, I probably want to print them so that you can show that to your customer and, and they can decide what's coming in or it might be a deduct, right? So you'll probably want to set it up something like this. Um, I don't know if you'd ever want to print a rejected uh, alternate, maybe, or maybe it's some kind of an all, uh, internal document. But you're going to tell us how you want the document generator to handle alternates, okay? And you're going to do it by uh, document type, just you know, same bit. Change orders, very similar. This is a change order. Change orders have a status. They have five values, pending, submitted, approved, accepted, and rejected. Very similar. 
um, if the change order is not approved, and this one is not, I, you don't know this yet probably, but I can tell by the status that's pending. We color this different colors depending on the status. So if it's not approved, it's not part of this estimate. The numbers are not here, but you may want to print it or you may not want to print it. So again, you're going to tell the document generator what status values, approved always will print now, but what status values um, you want to consider for document generation by document. I'm looking at takeoff right now. Okay? And that, my friends, I think this is new. It looks like uh, we're going to print the document author. Uh, could be... <laughs> I'm not sure how this works. I uh, can't remember, but it looks like it's it's probably picking up values. Yeah, I assume it's picking up values from the project, and it's bringing that person's name into the estimate, and, and you have some control here as to what gets printed. Okay, so that's about it as far as print directives. Remember, I was up here at the globals. They're all flowing in to the estimate level. However, at the estimate level, I can update them according to the needs of this particular estimate. If I find that I'm making the same changes over and over and I wish I had started at the global, remember this make default, same business. It's, it, we, it's a two-way street. And you'll see there's my node. Now I was in here earlier setting these up at the estimate level. That's why I've got some values here and we didn't see those before. I made them um, at the estimate level. But you see that this dialog box looks very, very similar to what we showed you at the global. Okay? And guys, that's about it. Um, let's, I think what we'll do here um, for five or ten minutes, we'll just go ahead and run through some documents so you can take a look at what's happening. Um, as far as printing documents, uh, if you were in some other sessions, you'll know that if, if we come in here for reports, um, for other functions, we can, um, we can identify the scope of, of that particular function. For example, if I was running a report, let's say I'm, I'm interested in um, line, line item type, okay? If that's highlighted, that's how I scope it. So I'm only getting floor A. It's similar to what we did in 6.0 where you would, you would highlight X number of rows of your grid. Um, and these can be non-contiguous. Um, you know, I, I could have done floor A and room A76, no problem. All this is the same. It hasn't changed. By the way, I got another bug here. I've, um, this looks fine when you uh, display it. However, when you actually print it, there are some extraneous characters here that will be fixed in the next couple days as well. Okay, now the reason I'm mentioning this is this is not how documents work. We don't, we, we don't scope the estimate when it comes to documents. Um, it's always going to print the entire estimate, but it is based on what is ignored, what is no printed, right? Um, these these um, printing directives that we've had for some time, okay? So, um, but again, if, if this is not like reports. It will not be scoped. It's, it doesn't matter what you're sitting on here. When you go to print, that's what you're going to get. Okay, so let's run through a couple, uh, a couple scenarios. Let's first take a look at my estimate settings. Estimate settings, um, install, installation charges, delivery charges. This, this is similar to what I talked about when I was talking about breaking out install and delivery, but this actually excludes it from the entire estimate, all right? Um, let, me, uh, let me show you how that works. If I go down into one of these products, I see cost type here, delivery installation. That's what's driving it. We have this new function, this new column here. There are, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 of these uh, uh, predefined um, functions. And it's, it allows you to, uh, to further categorize your, your estimate. And um, 
you're encouraged to go to your library items and tag them appropriately. Once you tag them in the library, well, they're going to be drug into every assembly. And if you drag them into here, they'll already be tagged. And it'll give you a nice little breakout like this, uh, kind of some analysis information. But if you want to exclude delivery and install from a bid, and or if you want to break out delivery and install automatically from your products, then that's the key mechanism how we're going to hook everything together. You're going to have to have those in there. I mentioned earlier that if you are um, placing uh, delivery and install into the into the uh, a particular product, then you could hook into the feature of breaking it out, which is what I'm going to show you. Okay, but remember that, guys. You also can you you might have delivery and install, but then you go to quote it, and this particular job they don't they don't want you to install. They don't want you to deliver it. Now we have a very easy way of just clicking a couple mouse clicks and boom, it's like you've ignored all those rows. They won't be there. Okay, But if they are there and you decide that you want to print them, now you can either print them, bury them within the product, or you can break them out. Let's go ahead and bring up a document, guys. Um, I, um, I'll tell you what, I've said so many words here. I'm going to go back just real quick to this quotation. And again, what am I doing? Base estimate, not printing it. Change order, I'm printing a header and I'm printing notes. If, if notes exist. First summary level, which are my floors, I'm printing a header, a subtotal. I'm hiding the quantity, but I am printing sell price. Second summary level, which would be the rooms. I am printing uh, headers, note headers, uh, subtotal, and I'm hiding quantity. I'm printing sell price as well. All these other ones, it wouldn't matter what they were defined because I don't have them in this bid, so I would ignore them. Let's take a look at the document. Okay, up it comes. Uh, that might be a bitmap uh, logo. I'm just using poor man's logo. All this is the same. It hasn't changed. There's your, your, uh, uh, your header text. This is different. I told you that if you wanted to, you could print job specifications. Well, I've turned on the directive that says print my product category level specs. For, for folks that don't know about job specification, that won't mean much to you. The folks that are using it, it should mean quite a bit. So these are the specs that I had um, identified as being applicable. Uh, these are the ones that are driving my estimate right now and the corresponding value. Guys, if you had chosen a dynamic job spec that you're identifying at runtime, and that was the case with this guy right here, we will print that as well. So it doesn't matter if it's static or dynamic, we'll print the right verbiage. Okay. That's what that's all about. OK, we've seen this before. These were the columns I'm asking to print. Floor A. Now, if somebody said, that looks like a section, I'd probably give you a B. It looks like a section. The question is, is, is it a section? No. In my estimate, I did not explicitly put a section in the grid. Okay, I, I'm, I didn't put it up here at the very top. I didn't have a row type of section. This is the business where I am asking it to generate a header for me. I asked it when I'm printing the um, first level of summary notes to print a header. I also said, go ahead and print me a subtotal. It's down here. And I said, hide the quantity, which it did, but show me the sell price. Okay, Looks a lot like the old bit with a section and a subtotal, doesn't it? And, and that's kind of the way you should look at it. When you run your estimates through conversion, you know we're building all this for you based on the implied hierarchy of subtotal, total, and grand total. OK, now we're printing the next one down. I, I, uh, I have the next indented summary. I asked it to print it. Didn't have to, but I asked it to print it. I asked it to print the, um, the header as well, OK, like a generated section. I asked it to print notes. Apparently, I have no notes there or that I would see them. And uh, I also asked it to print a subtotal. So we can see the same approach, just like before. We didn't change anything. We didn't make this um, just the nature of the document. I thought about indenting these things in like we indented these, but when I did it, it looked, looked pretty bad. So I just decided to keep it exactly the way it was in the old days. OK? Now, we go down here a little bit further. Where is it? Here. 
uh, we're seeing the rest of it print. Now, I have an alternate that's in a pending status, and I have a change order that's in pending. The system will automatically take any alternate that isn't approved and any change order that isn't approved, and it's going to print it after the totals area automatically. Um, in the past, you, you know, you, this is a pretty, uh, you can get creative with project packs. So in the past, maybe what you did to, to kind of um, um, generate something that looks like this is you might have said don't print totals, and then you might, you might total things yourself, and then that was a way of getting stuff in the body of the grid to print after the totals. Well, with 7.0, we, we tried to, to make this easier so that if we did have an alternate or if, and or if we had a change order, they would print after the totals. And they're, they're printing the same print instructions are going to tell us how to print these. Okay. Now, I also had another uh, change here. You notice uh, with this alternate, there's taxes. I'm printing this row. If we decide, if you tell it to hide taxes, we won't print that. So we will hide the tax in the alternate just like we hide it up here. All right? Okay, I'm going to close that. And uh, this is taking a little longer than I thought. Okay, there will be time, though. I'm just about ready to wrap it up. Time for some questions. But first, let me make a couple changes. Let's see what happens when this alternate here is, uh, let's say it's approved. So it goes from pending to approved. In fact, uh, this should change here. So 11154. Hmm. I expected that to change. And one five four. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, silly me. Yeah, this is what it is at this level. Um, up here, up at these higher levels, it definitely was moving dollars in and out. But yeah, that won't change at that level. Okay. So. What I want to do here is now show you where room A34 prints. It's now approved. It's really part of the estimate. And we'll see now that it's moved up in stature. It was printed prior when it was pending. It was printing after the totals. Well, now it's just printing in its normal spot because it is indeed part of the estimate. And these values, if we were to um, look at our... Um, our, well, I've got to go down one more here. If we go to look at the totals, um, that definitely increased because now that, that alternate is part of my estimate. Okay? The same thing is true for change order. If this change order is approved, okay, now it's green, green. I'm saving it here. I don't I shouldn't save it. I'm just I'm used to it. I never trust computers. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem. I should see now the alternate and the change order, and here he is, part of the regular, or whoops, part of the regular bid. It moves up, so it's above the total. Okay, so there's a change. Um, let's. Um, the other thing that again, my estimate has, my estimate has, install and delivery charges. It's part of the cost types. Um, and if I go to my printing instructions for this estimate and I say um, break out install and delivery. Okay, so my customer needs to see it as its own explicit um, uh, row in the, in the generated output document. So be it. What will happen, does a fair amount of work, it's got to go in and readjust just in case you print sell price. It's actually backing out whatever install and delivery existed on all these different nodes and coming up with the right value here, just in case you're printing it. Um, but what we'll see is towards the end, before my totals, because it is part of my totals, 
it's busting it out into an explicit row. And you have a choice. You can either print uh, two separate lines or um, once we get it fixed, you'll be able to put delivery and install on one line. Okay, so that, uh, that's a, a pretty big change right there. Um, I don't have an example of this, and I'm running a little late, but, you know, you can put miscellaneous install and delivery on your base bid, essentially for your, you know, the entire estimate. You could put them on alternates, and you can put them on change orders. And if and miscellaneous install and delivery, this, this addresses things like per diem charges, travel time. Um, oh gosh, there, there's, just, there's just a number of things here uh, if I bring up this dialog box. And if we have um, uh, these costs, then <clears throat> they are going to be part of the printed um, or uh, part of the bro when we break out install and delivery, they would be added into there. We see already that we have the the install and delivery that's come from the grid, but there could be other charges as well that we add. And if we aren't breaking out install and delivery, then I'm going to print um, my miscellaneous install and delivery as a separate line down towards the bottom as well. So those costs are going to come through. And guys, that is about it as far as the changes. Uh, again, it, it's really, it, it's more going to be focused on setting up your summary nodes, giving it the right printing directives. And really, you, you probably are coming at this from the context of 6.0. So you know, you'll be thinking about these guys the way you used to think about subtotal or total or grand total and uh, printing those in a way that makes good sense. Sometimes you're going to be hiding sell price. Uh, maybe you'll be hiding quite a bit. All of that is still uh, uh, at your discretion. So with that, I'm going to open it up to the floor for questions. I've got uh, 140, so we got 20 more minutes. That did take a little bit longer. Sorry about that. Um, but I'll open it up to the group. Any questions on printing documents? Hey, Rod. Yes. I got a question about uh, printing stuff after the total line. Um, the way we currently do our bids, we print our exclusions after the total line, like underneath the section header. How, is there a way to print those after the total line now? Because I can't seem, I've been messing around with the demo, and I can't seem to give them to print after the total line. It always prints them before. Right. So, get this down here so we can see it. <clears throat> When you say exclusions, are they alternates? No, they're just like standard exclusions that we exclude out of our base bid that we always put after the total total line. Okay. They're <clears throat> common. So, they are. <coughs> so I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. So um, the way I've seen this done in the past, and it really hasn't changed, uh, I've got a very, very small footer here, but I, I see this thing go on for like sometimes a page or two with all of the um, things that we are not going to be held accountable for, acts of God, et cetera, et cetera. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. And instead of printing it here in the footer area, you would prefer to print it um, uh, above the totals? No, below the total. Oh, below the totals. OK. So I would suggest that you continue to use the footer text to, and then that, that automatically prints down below the totals. Well, we don't use the footer text now, really. We, we have created a library of standard exclusions and you know comment rows, basically, and hold them in the, in the library, bring them in, and then just turn on the ones that apply and turn off the ones that don't apply, if that makes sense. With you. Russ, Russ, I concur with that because uh, I don't like to use a footer line for comments of that sort. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe what we could do. Let me let me try this out. I, I get what you're saying. Don't want to use the footer. You'd rather be using comments probably here, 
indoor row notes and have them print out just like they would print above the total line. What if we did something like this? What if you um, had, it isn't a true alternate, we're going to use it for exclusions. But if, if, we, um, if we got creative here and we said it's a pending alternate, and let's say there's no dollars and cents, maybe what we have here is, um, is a number of, of sections. I'm going to, that was no printed, so I'm going to, sample exclusion, and then I'm going to come up here and say uh, insert after, I'm going to put a comment, same bit, sample exclusion, and <clears throat> I'm going to come here and I'm going to, uh, this, it doesn't matter I guess, I'll ignore it, no print it. And if I go over here, I think we're going to be close to what you want. Whoops. My mouse. All right. So let's go down here. Whoops. Sample exclusion. Okay. Um, I've got an enhancement request, guys, in here to, that won't be coming in in the next couple days because it's a database change, but I have a, an, um, a request, and I can't remember the, I think it was either to hide this or hide this, or, <coughs> but, but I'm thinking that if we did that, <coughs> would this get it for you to be able to, to use a alternate as an exclusion? Yeah, that's how I kind of... That's how I had it figured right now, but I didn't know if there was an easier way to do it than making an alternate or something like that. That's the thing that comes to my mind. I because the alternate, if it's if it's not approved, it's going to print down here, and it's going to follow the same print directive. So you could, I'm I'm imagining you got like a bunch of comments, yeah, or one comment with row notes. Oh no, you probably don't want row notes because you could have used a footer and had the same thing. Yeah, we just need um, a bunch of comments. That's, that's what I would say, and then this business of printing pending here, that's the one thing that's stopping you, I think, from using this workaround, and that's going away. That is going to be an option for whether or not we print pending. Well, what I do for that, I just no print that summary node, and then I just put a mm -hmm. section line in there, and it says it's standard exclusion, so the section line prints and the header doesn't print. Yep, that would work. That would definitely work. So that would be my, my advice to you, and I think that'll work nicely. Okie doke. Thank you. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, Ross, does the export still work? Yes. Yeah, export works. Um, so in other words, we're going to export an estimate out to a spreadsheet. Does it go to a spreadsheet or to Word? Because right now it, well, it goes to an RTF, which converts it to a Word. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, that was all rewritten. We're talking about, in Pro, the ability to go export RTF documents. Yes. All of that has been changed to work in concert with the printed document. So whatever we see on the printed document, you're going to see on that RTF file which the only reason we're doing that is it sounds to me like you edit it after the fact. You can still do that. Right, for the exact same reason he was just talking about. I was trying to force things to go underneath that total line. So what we would do is just cut and paste and move stuff around. Okay. So maybe you won't have to export it out anymore um, by using alternates in a more uh, in a creative way for the exclusions. But but if you decide to export, that, that is still there, absolutely. Any other questions? Hey, Ross, Mike, and I would. Um, hey, Mike. Is there a way to uh, increase the space between the uh, and the alternates? Uh, we're running into the problem where uh, if we have three or four alternates listed after the total, it's just kind of running together. All right, so um, let's see here, alternate pending. 
alternate pending. There. Yeah, see how room 1A12 uh, pending is just below the uh, total line. Uh, if we could increase that space or even, um, even increase the space and put a uh, double line in there just to kind of separate the, uh, um, the alternates from the base bit a little bit more. Okay, no problem. Um, I'll, I can definitely add spaces and uh, possibly draw a line, but um, I might want to I might want to bounce that off additional people. But yeah, I can see that's jammed up there pretty tight. I see that we're putting a space here. I'm I'm thinking we need something like this right here. Maybe another. Well, it looks like there's one space. Yeah, no problem. I can add that. Yeah, that would be great. Um, the other question I had was if you go back to your uh, project pack uh, bid and then you look at your, <coughs> excuse me, um, like uh, room uh, A34 that's uh, expanded, um, if you could uh, click on the arrow to expand out that, uh, that WYSIWYG window. When you click on the ignore or the no print on the uh, summary level, the products in that summary all print. Is there is that supposed to be that way, or because you hit like ignore, room A34 won't print, but all the products inside of that will. And I would think that yeah. if you clicked ignore, you'd uh, look at everything inside that node for summary. Yeah, and, and I got that fixed. Let, let's make sure. Good segue here. Um, uh, oh, we, we made it an alternate. So, yeah, down here. Come on. Uh, where's A34? A is it up one? <clears throat> well, anyway, uh, yeah, I saw that, and I don't know, maybe maybe I'm not on the right development version, but I actually found that the other day, and and I changed it. And you're absolutely right; all of these roll downhill. So if I no print, notice it, that little, um, what is it, Just it's a gray, yeah. So this is the no print sign, it's a yellow guy, the ignore is a red exclamation mark. <clears throat> and then what we do is the ones that inherit these properties, we, we show them, but they're, in, they're gray. Now these have explicit ignores. And you're absolutely right. If I no print this and I have called for printing products or what have you, they should not print. That, that's a problem you have right now, but I have got that fixed, and you'll get that patch in a couple days. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Yep, we're not perfect, but when, when, uh, we're, we're pretty good at fixing stuff. So anyway, that's, that one's coming. Any other questions or comments? Um, hey, Russ, this is Becky email from out of, And we have the option on the 7.0 to hide product prices, but we don't have the pr option to hide product, product quantities. Can we add that? Um, Just right, right there. Yeah. We had, I was able to do it in 6.0, but I can't do it in 7. We took that out. Can't hide a product quantity. I don't see it here. Um, Wouldn't that be a column line? Yeah. But but then you but, take it off of your summary too. 
Yeah, so you're saying that there's times where you want to see quantity and there's times that you don't. Correct. It's, uh, who's, who am I speaking with? Becky from Felling. Oh, hey, Becky. Um, Hi. Why don't we, I'm going to take that one offline. I, I can't put that one in in a couple days because it would be a database change. We, we would have to put in um, some sort of directive here. But I might want to talk further with you about that because I don't remember doing that in 6.0. So I'm going to have to do some research. And, I, and, and I'm wondering, it just, um, you, you must have a reason for wanting that. But I've never, I don't recall ever having a conversation with anyone about this. So why don't I give you a buzz um, okay. a little bit later today. And I, I would like to understand clearly your need for that. And then, uh, then we'll get it in the hopper. OK. OK. Just, just for grins, anyone else in the group, would, would, you, would you want to um, hide the quantity, like you hide the price of a, let's just bring one up here. So we hide the price of a product, right? There's a product. I'm not printing the price. But would anyone else not want to print the quantity? Seems like that's important. You'd want to tell the customer how many of these they're getting. Again, it, I um, would think that's a print setting, though, if you just tell it to not print that column. Right. Okay. I guess how I would use it and how I, this is how I used it in 6.0 and I was able to do it. I guess I'm not sure how anymore. Um, but instead, let's say my room B was actually a bar and one of the options, the piece of it was the armrest. Well, they don't want to know that it's 17 feet. I would like to take that off and that it's one complete bar top. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. Well, um, maybe what you were doing is you had another column called like print quantity and it had one, one lot even though the dollars and cents were being driven by the real quantity. I wonder if that's what happened. That, because that would be a workaround where you would, but of course, uh, now, now you're, you're forced either with a formula or, or, or some way right. of, of getting the information. It's not, I've, I've worked with it for two weeks now and I can't get around it easily, I guess. You know what I'm saying though? It's like you could have a, a, a print quantity, like another column that has a, uh, you know, one of your custom columns, maybe. But it, I'll, I'll give you a buzz, Becky. I got a note here, and we can talk further about it. Okay. But I, I get you now. I, I see what you're saying. Any other questions? Hey, Russ, can you email out of here now? No. No. Um, the was with um, this is still being generated out of our code. Uh, un, it is not a RAVE document where you can uh, you can save it as a PDF. Um, so the process would still be the same. Um, what I use for Project Pack is Cute PDF, and I print it to the PDF. It's free, works real good, and then I email the document. But but I don't have that function in here to push a button. No. Anything else, group? All righty. Well, we're, we're coming up on the hour. Um, let me ask you all a question. It, it sounds like the peop there's definitely people using this and printing documents. Is, is that the case for most of you? Or are, are you still, uh, maybe you haven't upgraded yet and um, just kind of seeing what's coming your way. How, how many are definitely using 7.0 and printing documents? We are right. selling. Well, we are, and uh, we're, I'm liking it. I did have some problems with the printing. I found myself uh, playing with the print document uh, longer than I was actually doing the quote, just figuring out the uh, first and second summary. But I'm getting a handle of it now. OK. Good. Good. All right, guys. Um, if, if you do, um, it, it seems to me that we've, like I said, I've, I've gotten, I don't know, four or five 
they're not terrible problems, but they're definitely nuisance type things. We're going to get them addressed, but work with support if you're seeing some things that are, are not behaving um, properly or in a manner that you need them to, just certainly give us a shout. Uh, we'll take a look at it. Um, I think in general, we you can kind of see, we tried to keep the documents as much like they were uh, in 6.0 so there wouldn't be a learning curve. And I think, again, whoever that gentleman was, once, once you get a handle on these summary nodes, the hierarchical nature, and uh, I think the key thing, again, is this dude right here. Once you get this figured out, um, I think your, your documents will start looking better and, and you'll, you'll be able to achieve what you, what you want to and what you need to. All right, group. Well, again, we appreciate you taking your time uh, learning about 7.0. Uh, we've got a couple more scheduled uh, tomorrow. I think let's see, two, I think tomorrow is Plan Swift plugin, and then Thursday we're taking a look at um, how to use this new uh, fine change and some other kind of editing things. So, if you're interested in that, go ahead and sign up. I will sign off myself. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. And I uh, hope you're loving life with 7-0. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.